Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining the webinar. Um, if there's any more technical issues, please send me a link in the bot bottom. Um, I appreciate that, but I, we're going to assume that that's all settled. So today we're going to be talking about the sun's move into Pisces for this year. So I am Ram Das Bill Sinclair, and I'm happy to be with you this morning. This is part of a series that we started a couple months ago to study the solar ingress each month. So this is a picture of me. I was just in India for about a month, and this is a very unusual or very interesting temple. If you see like over my head there, this is the Gopuram, the entrance gate to the temple you can see that this temple has all the avatars of Vishnu. So Vishnu has come um, in form to represent each of the planets. So it's kind of, it was a beautiful temple to visit. So I thought I would start out with that. You can see that the first one on the left has the body of a fish and that's K2. Then the turtle, which is Saturn. Next to him is the figure that has the Boars. It has the head of a, a boar, and that's Rahu. And then I think next we have Mars, which is the head of a lion. And then the short guy is Jupiter, Vamana. Uh, next to him we have a looks like Balarama, which is uh, Mercury. We have Rama, which is the sun. Krishna, which well next to Krishna, Krishna is next almost to the end. So um, I guess that would be. Um, uh, Balarama, it would be uh, Parashurama is there. So they're all there. Um, so I just thought I would start it out. I also want to let you know um, I've gone, I've got my social media game going and I'm now broadcast, I'm now posting videos on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook at Vedic Astrologer by Bill Sinclair and on Instagram at Ramdas Bill. So I hope you'll check out those sites. Um, I just posted yesterday uh, a YouTube on the COVID uh, coronavirus, the what I believe could be the origin chart. So I hope you'll check that out. I'd appreciate it. I also want to thank you for being here because this supports ACFA. And um, ACFA also has a, a channel on YouTube that I hope everyone will sign up for and look for it. We're going to be adding more content all the time. So really, it's a good place to come and visit and get caught up on the latest news. Um, you, our newsletter is available online at our website. And also, I always like to let people know you can make a tax-free donation to ACFA. Any amount helps, and uh, we certainly appreciate the support. Before we get started, I would like uh, for us to take a moment to just uh, do a mantra. This is a mantra for healing. Um, I'm in Seattle, and which is the kind of epicenter of the U.S. outbreak of uh, COVID, uh, the coronavirus. So I think it's a good time to just ask for healing. Uh, one thing I think we have to remember is as astrologers, we're working with the cosmic energy a lot. So the more we work with it, we tune into that channel. So I hope you'll take a moment to sit back and relax. Take a deep breath in. Let's get centered for um, the presentation. And we'll just do the um, Maha Mrityunjaya Mantra. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sagandim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukamiva Bandanan Ritior Mokshiyam Amritat Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sagandim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukamiva Bandanan Ritior Mokshiyam Amritat Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sagandim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanan Ritior Mokshiyam Amritat Om Shanti 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 So today we're going to be studying the sun in Pisces. We're also going to talk about the solar lunar axis because 
really to understand the sun, how it's going to manifest, I believe it's important to watch the moon and especially the full moon. And then we're going to go through some ideas, putting all this information together of how each sign may experience the energy. This is uh, not a prediction. This is just a way for me to show how I'm synthesizing the energy. There's many accomplished astrologers on this broadcast, so I invite you just to take this you know, for your own information. We all have um, a, a lot to share. Uh, so this is by no means the end all be all. It's just a suggestion. And I hope um, you'll, you know, take the information and use it through your own wisdom. And at the end, we'll have a discussion and questions. So if there's, uh, at the end, you can send me questions in through typing uh, on the comment box. So I like to start with just looking at the full moon chart. So we can see here that on the full moon, which is on uh, April 7th this year, the sun is at 24 degrees of Pisces. So it's in Revity. Mercury is only at one degree. So he's by himself through most of the month, it looks like in there. And this is a good place to fix in our mind what aspects he's under. Now by Parashara's aspects, we have an aspect from Saturn in the fifth house, has cast a third aspect onto um, the sun. And by Rashi Drishti, which is the sign by sign aspect, um, all the mutable signs um, aspect each other. So he's also receiving an aspect from Ketu and Rahu. And uh, since Mars is uh, in the same sign for most of the month, or it comes in uh, with Saturn, that the Saturn may carry some of the Mars energy. So as we talk about the sun, we have to remember he's facing some pretty heavy aspects. But the thing about the sun is if anyone can take it, he can. So it's a very interesting thing just to get our, ourselves oriented to what's coming up in the chart. Also, you can see there that really um, throughout the month, uh, Capricorn is going to be a very important sign because we have Sun there, Jupiter moves into it, and it's Mars. So we have Saturn in his own sign, Mars exalted, and Jupiter debilitated. So if that's the hot spot sign for the month, um, it's very important. So if you have planets there, or if your ascendant is there, especially if your moon is there, it's just uh, something to keep in mind as you plan the month ahead. So let's talk a little bit about Sun in Pisces. So Sun's going to move into Pisces on the 14th of March, and it'll be there through April 13th. Now, these are a very interesting placement for the Sun, because the Sun in Pisces is in a great friend sign. Now, the way I look at that, it's like 37.5% positive and 12.5% negative. So it's in about a 50% 50, 50 strength, then most of it is positive. So this is a, a good outlook for it. We also look the sun is a sattvic planet and Pisces is a sattvic sign. So this is a theme that we're going to see immediately. There's a lot of stuff pointing to sattva in this placement. And this gives us a key um, into understanding that. And we'll go into what that means a little bit more in a moment. Sun is part of the leadership class, which is the Kshatriya class. And their duty is to bear arms, punish the wicked, and protect the good. So they keep order in society. And, the, and Pisces is part of the priestly or philosopher class, where they're really transcending society. They're thinking more of the bigger picture. So this is a little bit of a disconnect. Um, their, you know, sun is more an action. Sun creates things, uh, you know, on the planet. He wants things to run in an orderly fashion. And uh, Pisces is a, can be kind of a nebulous sign. It's watery after all, and it's um, mutable. So the sun represents Dharma and Pisces represents Moksha. So we have some pretty high ideals that are being activated in this combination. And for Pisces rising, sun rules the sixth house of past life difficult issues. And we also have to say disease. Sixth, li sixth house is one of the the first house we look at for the onset of disease, which could play out um, in a big scale this month for us. So 
Now I like to look at the nakshatras. And here we see that we have Purva Bhadrapada ruled by Jupiter. And we know already that Jupiter is going to be going into debilitation this month. Then um, Pisces, we have Uttarashada, which is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is, is in his own sign. And lastly, we have Revati, which is ruled by Mercury. Now, if you look on this slide here, you'll see that each of the nakshatras has a combination of gunas prescribed to it. And you'll see that the, next to Jupiter, it says SSR, and that's Sattva Sattva Rajas. And then Uttarabhada is Sattva Sattva, sattva, sattva um, Tamas. And finally, we have Revati, which is all three levels of sat, Sattva. So this is a very sattvic sign. Um, and we get that from the Rashi itself and also in the lunar, uh, the nakshatra level, we get that. And we have a sattvic sign, a planet sitting there. So really we can see that there's a very strong thrust for us to move forward and move to the highest level that we can attain. So let's break up um, the word sattva a little bit. So sat means truth and tva means nature or essence. So it's really about uh, manifesting your true essence. Sattva raises a person to truth, honesty, and wisdom. And if it's an object we're considering, that object can, will become pure and clean. This is out of the uh, Manye Williams dictionary when they're describing sattva. Sattva is also related to the um, dynamic quality of equilibrium. And I'd like to clarify here that equilibrium is not static. It is definitely dynamic. You're always having to adjust to maintain equilibrium. So, and especially in Pisces, which is flowing water in all directions, that this is going to, it's a very dynamic state to maintain that centered balance. Um, Anyone who practices meditation understands this, that it changes in a you know, millisecond. You're always adjusting, but with consciousness. So the sun also represents worldly power, authority, and the eternal soul. So here the atma is, can be really um, emphasized, that higher nature, the universal consciousness. But we have to remember sun is that kshatriya class. And so it is about manifesting those ideas, uh, you know, and implementing them in the world. Sun also indicates vitality, health, and very importantly, disinfection. So, I mean, we have a virus that has now become a pandemic globally. So, you know, the sun here has, is gaining, it's in a good position to how to clarify that, but we have to remember he's under pretty heavy malefic aspect, and this may be blocking the work he can do this month. We have to see how it goes. Sun is also being aspected, as I said, by Saturn, Rahu, and Ketu. Therefore, it'll take effort for us to promote this growth um, during the transit. So there's the global sphere of what's going on everywhere, and then most of this talk really talks about our personal, how we are going to manage it. So um, Pisces can be very uh, directionless because it's very intuitive. Now, you can manage this energy quite effectively by going with that intuition, but, uh, you know, and it will lead you through the rapids. But sometimes it helps if you're going for a longer term to keep, you know, a little structure on to help guide us through the rapids that can be the emotional Pisces. Okay, so how do we use this solar energy? So I looked at the um, uh, yoga philosophy and I pulled out the niyamas, which is how we interact with other people. And um, I thought that might be an interesting way to look at how as a structure to apply this solar energy in um, Pisces. So the first thing interesting is cleanliness in mind, speech, body, and healthy boundaries. That's the quality of Saucha. 
So this is the time to, especially with what we're facing in the media, all of the fear and everything, we have to be very conscious of what we consume. We have to be aware of what's happening, but we can't get too caught up in the everyday um, ins and outs of things because you have to realize the media's goal is to grab your attention. The goal for your progress is to free your attention away from the things of the world so you can direct it into the higher um, consciousness and the more uh, productive level. Um, healthy boundaries is especially important here because Pisces tends to be boundarylessness. I mean, it's like it's uh, free flowing and it can be quite exhilarating and fun. But um, I, like I said, to move forward, most of us need a little structure to help us keep going. The second quality I would um, invite you to look at is your contentment and gratitude, santosha. And so this is really adopting a glass half full perspective. And it's, you know, as a mental health therapist, I know that if you have an active practice of writing down or even saying out loud three things you're grateful for every day, it helps to even your mood out. It will help you to um, go through this month with more grace and more contentment. The third thing is discipline and tapas. So often discipline has a very bad word. <laughs> you know, people don't like it. It feels like a structure. It feels like, you know, restriction and all that. But tapas is just putting a little effort in the right direction. So after all, the sun here is about maintaining order and discipline. So he is going to help you to do this and he's going to be able to perform better and you're going to tune into the energy more clearly if you have a moderate plan and you can use um, positive reinforcement to integrate your actions into your daily routine. So this is where the second one, contentment and gratitude and discipline goes hand in glove. So I use, there's a technique we use in, in uh, working with people called positive self-talk. And what that means is it's, it's look in a mirror and say two nice things about yourself every day. When you do something, when you go for your 20 minute walk at lunch, take time to not only do it, but on your way back, uh, you know, say like, oh, good for you. Look, you really did this because that will help to motivate you to keep going and pursue, you know, positive actions. It really does work. So I highly recommend it. The other thing is introspection. And this is really taking inventory of your strengths and area of improvement. Because we have access to this Piscean energy through the sun, which is our sun is our consciousness as well. Um, it's a good time to really kind of look around and see where you are and where you would like to go. Um, you can lovingly look at yourself and realize there's some things to work on. I'll give you a little hint. Everyone here has some stuff to work on. The day that you have no more things to work on, you're not around here anymore. You've, you've gone on to the next plane. So don't be harsh on yourself, but look at your patterns because sometimes we fall into patterns and we just don't think about them. So the sun is bringing light to that subconscious area of your life. So it's a great time to look at that and see just kind of, you know, is there something you could do better? Like, I mean, one great area is Netflix. I mean, I find myself watching shows sometimes that I'm, they're kind of exciting or whatever. And then I think, you know, really, there's a lot of violence in here. Why am I putting that into my life? So I, you know, can let that show go. Things like that. I'm not talking about huge things, but little things. And the last one is seeking help. This I cannot stress enough. I mean, I think maybe just because as an Aries rising, it's, it's hard for me. But it's the idea of letting go of the thought that you're in charge. And the most important thing is to ask for assistance. So, and this is on every level. It's, you know, if you don't know how to do something, what do we all do? We know, go, we ask Google. We say, Google, you know, how do I do this thing? And guess what? 75 people come to your rescue. Well, I'm gonna offer the idea that if you sit quietly and ask your higher power in whatever form you experience them 
to assist you in what you're doing on these goals, your results will be 10 times what they do if you just try to go it alone. So I don't know if it's a Western thing or Aries thing, but this is one of the things that I found to be most transformative, and I hope you'll try it this much. Just remember to ask for help. This will help you really use this. Um, but it can be a very productive time if you, you know, so these are some of the ideas. So let's look at the lunar cycle. So the new moon is on the 24th of March at 10 degrees Pisces in the um, in Uttra Bhadrapada. So you'll remember that that is uh, ruled by Saturn. Now this is a very important new moon, probably the most important new moon of the year because this is the Vedic New Year. So we draw a chart for the capital of each country um, for that time when the, um, the month of Chaitra, which is the full moon, is going to be in Chitra, um, as it is this month. And it's the bright half the first day. So at the moment that that energy begins, you can draw a chart for the location of the capital of your um, country, and you get an idea of what's in store for the country. So I think this is a really interesting thing to look at as we've looked at how much sattvic energy is here. I think it's very positive that in the Vedic system, we set the new year when the sun and the moon, the two luminaries are in Pisces, you know, a very sattvic sign. Moon is of course also a sattvic planet. So I think this gives the best hope for each country and it gives a chance to look at how things are gonna manifest. So while you have the birth chart of the countries, a lot of people just use to figure out what's gonna happen um, in the year, they use this annual chart because it is very, very powerful and it really gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, I'm gonna be posting a YouTube video about the US's Chacha Shukla chart uh, in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. And then we have the full moon. And that is April 7th um, at 24 degrees Virgo in Chitra. So that is what we're going to talk about now, because I believe we have this background of this sattvic sun and Pisces, all this potential. But what the moon kind of helps us show what may really come to fruition, like or how it's going to play out. So again, we kind of follow the same methodology. The full moon is gonna be in Virgo, ruled by Mercury, in the sign of Chitra, which is ruled by Mars. And so Pisces and Virgo are both dual signs and they can bring progress or regression. So we have this kind of Piscean sign and we have Virgo that they can go one way or the other. They're also very opposite in characteristics. Um, because Pisces is very much about, um, it's a water sign and Virgo is an earth sign. So really there's a strong drive here to bring something practical out of all of the Piscean um, flow. Virgo is a rejacic sign and Mercury is Triguna. So this can bring, um, Mercury is gonna be a little more in the um, drive for action and search. So it's kind of all over the place. And Chitra, interestingly enough, Revati we have at the end of Pisces is three levels of Sattva. And here we have Chitra, which is three levels of Tamas. So we can, you can see that we're starting to get some real extremes that are showing up here. And this could mean that there could be serious upheaval or a, a wide variety of things that could manifest. So Chitra is ruled by Mars, who is also a Tamasic sign. So all of this sattvic energy is being balanced by the tamasic energy, which is the opposite energy. Um, the full moon occurs in the Leopada of Chitra, which is sattvic. So we do get kind of a tip here that um, the full moon is going to be in the Leopada of Chitra. And so really some good success, some um, you know, higher ideals really could manifest here. So I say, therefore, the effort of, uh, with effort, the sophic lessons can fructify at this full moon. So again, this is up to us to make it happen. 
And I would say it's up to us in concert with asking for um, guidance and assistance from others. So the moon also is breaking the Kalsarpa Yoga at this time, and therefore it can be a stressful um, time and you feel like spending, um, feel like isolating, and that can be positive for introspection. So with the full moon, I mean, this is like the energy I think is gonna come about. It's gonna be stressful because we are in a Kalasarpa cycle. So that just adds a little layer of stress to our daily existence. So I think we all can see that with what's going on in the world, um, both uh, politically here in the US and politically in the UK, I mean, there's stress in the pol political nature, which relates to the sun and also health concerns with uh, no one really knowing what's gonna happen with this um, coronavirus. So those are some of the energies that are gonna be manifesting. So now let's look at what are the other transits um, and just see kind of what's going on here. I alluded to this at the beginning. Basically, the action is happening in Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn with their stay in Capricorn. But the other big news here is that on March 29th, um, Venus is going to go into Taurus and it's going to be there for about five months until the end of July. And so that is a major, um, it's a very important transit, very unusual because they'll have a whole retrograde cycle through there. So Taurus is really getting worked over in this transit. And we'll be speaking about this over the coming months. But you can see here the 24th of March is the uh, new moon. And then the full moon is on the 7th. And really the three things, uh, the blue lines are planets that are in their own or exalted signs. So this is part of the signature that we've talked about for this year is that um, Jupiter, um, Mars, uh, Saturn, and Taurus are all going to be creating Hamsa Yogas at different times of the year. So Mercury is going to go into Capricorn on the 29th, um, actually on the 30th, the day after it looks like, but then he'll retrograde and come back. So these are going to be this. The takeaway from this for me is that Capricorn is, you know, a, a place to watch as well as Pisces. So March enters Capricorn, his sign of exaltation, until May fourth. He's forming Ruchika Yoga for Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. And Ruchika Yoga um, is about action, ambition, ability to achieve, and energy. So he's going to get from the twenty fourth of March through May 4th, he's going to be very active um, and keep us moving. Uh, from the 29th of March, Venus begins his five month stay in Taurus, ending the 31st of July. This creates Malavya Yoga, which has to do with beauty, charm, wealth. So, I mean, I think for the, the financial markets around the world, this may be some good news to help it recover. The big thing is uh, always with Malavya Yoga, it's material success, not necessarily happiness. So we can still be suffering other ways, but things can come back. And this is really for people with Moon or with Lagna in Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius. So those fixed signs are going to be getting support, which really I think could help stabilize the world markets. Uh, March 30th, Jupiter enters the sign of Capricorn, his sign of debilitation, but only until June 29th. And then he goes back in uh, to Sagittarius, his own sign. So he's there for several months. April 8th, Mercury enters Pisces, his sign of debilitation, until April 23rd. This is his um, regular um, transit through there. And Saturn remains in Capricorn for the month, creating Sasha Yoga for Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. So I just wanted to give you a slide that has all this on it. You can refer to it in the future. So here's some ideas about how this all may play out. Looks like we're good on time. So we look at transits primarily from the moon, as always. However, looking at the lagna also gives us information. 
So if we look at Aries, which is also the natural zodiac, so this does have um, kind of a shadow implication for all of the signs. The sun will be in his weakest house as he's in the 12th. So you will need to apply extra focus and persistence to make progress on your goals. The full moon can awaken some paranoia, breathe through it, um, realize that this is just, you know, a shadow of the moon and keep going. Your public image and career may experience highs and lows until mid-June. And this is about all the action in Capricorn. Let the water settle before making any decisions in this area. So if your Aries rising, uh, you're gonna have uh, Mars is there and Mars just wants to take action, any action. Jupiter is you know, off and on not um, stable to really give you the wisdom. So just you know, take everything with a grain of salt and try to ride it through and see where you land um, by July, you'll know. For Taurus, the sun occupies your 11th house of gains. Um, now this can indicate spiritual progress with steady effort, um, which is a quality that comes naturally to you, so that's good. Material gains um, may also manifest between now and the end of July. Uh, the full moon can bring a new understanding related to creative projects and children. So that's something to keep in mind. This could be challenges or good things um, around what you're trying to create or, you know, life with your children. Some health issues may arise, so please address them if they surface um, so they're quickly resolved. This is just something, you know, we always say, you know, it's good to keep um, an eye on that. Gemini, sun occupies your 10th house, which indicates new insight into your self-confidence and your career profile, name, fame, reputation, all of that. Cleaning out clutter in your home space will help reduce your mental stress. Unresolved past issues may resurface suddenly with mixed results. So this means that this is the Capricorn energy there, that it's going to be in your um, sixth house, I believe. And so that's how it's going to be yeah, Gemini. It's going to be in your eighth house. Yeah. So it's just good to be ready for anything and realize that if challenges come up, accept them. Don't you know, fight, engage with them, but just accept them and help resolve them quickly. Either outcome creates its own energy you'll need to process. So that's what I'm saying there is just keep an, uh, keep an open mind. Uh, cancer, the sun occupies your ninth house, which indicates a great time for higher studies as teachers and new areas of interest will be available to you. So if something interesting comes along, you might really want to explore it. It could open up a lot of uh, good things for you. Your relationships and partners are likely to be in a dynamic state of flux until mid-June. So it could be a little um, rough riding through there. Just, you know, let it happen and see what the lessons are emerging for you. Through this process, you can gain important insights. Material gains will be manifesting until the end of July possibly from older siblings. Just see what happens. Leo, so if your moon or lagna are in Leo, sun occupies the eighth house and may bring insights into long-term issues, okay? The full moon will bring information about your family history and relationships. This could be a nice time to resolve them. New things may emerge that you weren't aware were going on. If you're involved in litigation or labor disputes, there will be action both positive and challenging until mid-June. Write it out and then decide what to do. That's always my advice. Let the change go. Don't make it when the planets are turbulent. Let things settle and then you'll really know where you are. Virgo, sun occupies the seventh house and offers a chance to deepen your connection to your significant other. The full moon occurs in Virgo and can have a direct impact on your mental and physical being. Maintain a balanced schedule and you will find your footing soon enough. Issues with children and creative projects may manifest and they're likely 
to continue until mid-June. So be patient and work through the details, a quality which is your strength. This is also an important thing, is to always look at the nature of the sign there, because that's going to hold what is going to be your best course. So research, planning, organizing, those kind of things, you know, categorizing are going to help you to process anything that comes up in the most natural way for a Virgo. Libra. Sun occupies the sixth house and may provide a creative way to negotiate a win-win agreement on an outstanding issue. The full moon in the 12th house can indicate poor sleep, so maintain a good sleep schedule and you'll reduce the impact. Vivid dreams may be inspiring, so it's a good time to keep a dream journal or jot down if something comes to you in that dream world. Home life will be turbulent until mid-June. You may consider changing houses, moving, things like that, but wait until the energy settles and then you can decide. Unexpected expenses may arise until the end of June. Pay them gladly as they represent unresolved past karma and you can only release them with an open heart. So this is a, a concept that I've learned in a very difficult way. When suddenly things happen that you think aren't fair and things like that, most of the time it's best just to go ahead and pay it and let it go because if something doesn't make sense to you if it's really out of the blue that's a good sign that this is a past life karma coming and so the best way it's i mean if you can pay it you know with money it, that's a lot better than paying through other ways like physical injury or illness or you know things like that conflict with people that are close to you scorpio Sun occupies the fifth house and can bring inspiration and insight. Partners can bring material support in the coming months. So that's good news for your partners. They may get a bonus. They may get a raise. They may win a lottery. Who knows? Until June, you may have mixed results dealing with siblings and in launching new efforts and ideas. So this could be a time for planning and for reflection and for doing all the background work before you launch a new venture. Sagittarius, sun occupies the fourth house of happiness. Connection with the divine in any form is the best path for, best path for true satisfaction. So follow your bliss. Parental and sibling issues are likely to emerge until mid-June. Um, career changes and insights will surface near, at the full moon. Avoid excessive shopping for the next several months as there will be a strong impulse to buy happiness. The good news is that happiness is free. Just sit in silence and breathe for 15 minutes and you will relax into contentment. So this is just so, you know, something to think about. Capricorn, sun occupies the third house and will give information and understanding about siblings and where you want to expend your energy. The full moon can bring good results from past action. All in all, you will ha likely have changes on many fronts in the coming months until the end of July. With focus, which is natural to you as Capricorns, there can be great progress. Keep a steady daily practice and you will profit from your endeavors. Aquarius, sun occupies the second house and will shed light on your family of origin and your childhood experiences. The full moon may be an emotional time as some uncomfortable insights about the past are likely to surface. A dream journal may yield deeper insights as there will be lots of activity on the subconscious plane until mid-June. A momentary increase uh, at work is likely, uh, sorry, monetary, a monetary increase at work is likely before the end of July. But again, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Oh, in fact, I say that in Pisces, who knew? Sun is the first house, um, sun is in the first house for Pisces and can energize all areas of life. The full moon in your seventh house of partners is a great time to pause and really focus on reconnecting with your partner. There will be a strong impulse to acquire new stuff in the next five months. So take a moment to browse before you buy. Your income and ability to bring things to manifestation will be hit and um, miss, will be hit and miss until mid-July. So this is the financial instability. So actually I said it here, don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's a very important quality uh, to follow. Just wait, let it come to you and then you can spend it. 
So that's what I have prepared for today. Um, I thank you very much for attending. We have plenty of time for questions. So let me open this up here and see. Okay, Sun in Pisces not being aspected by Rahu Ketu. Um, I'm using Rashi Drishti on that, uh, which is the um, all the mutable signs aspect each other. So that's what I was saying for that. Um, so any other questions? Please go ahead and put them in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close it out for today. I want to thank you very much for attending. Um, this will be posted on the ACVA YouTube channel. So um, if you um, want to review it, you're certainly welcome to do that. Tell your friends to come in and visit as well. And I hope I look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you very much.